Hey everyone, today I have a topic that I'm really excited for. We are going to be talking about the relationship between sleep, your hormones, and weight control. Why it's so important to get regular sleep in order to balance your hormones and maintain a healthier weight. Let's dive right in. So to start off with, we're going to be talking about the hypothalamus a little bit more. And I know you've probably heard it in some of my other videos, but it is such an important component and structure of your brain that is responsible for so many different things. Again, the hypothalamus is the master regulator of your body and in charge of maintaining homeostasis throughout your whole system. It takes in information from your body. So for instance, if you are to have an infection, it's going to raise your temperature and initiate your immune response in order to fight off that infection. It also takes information in from the external environment. Remember, we said that it cannot differentiate different types of threats. So a bear coming to attack you is seen as the same level of threat as your perceived worry or anxiety about something possibly happening in the future. It takes all of this information in, it's the master computer, it analyzes it, and it makes sure that the body is ready and prepared. It also maintains your day-to-day -day functioning. Again, back to that homeostasis piece. And it does this through several things that are all interrelated, including your appetite, your sleep, and then your hormones. And that's the big next piece that I wanna talk about. Your endocrine system, which is your hormone system, is this beautiful, complex, interwoven, crazy physiological process or multiple physiological processes that you have going in your body from the top of your head to the tip of your toes, your hormones affect something. When we as physicians talk about hormones, we often talk about them in isolation. We talk about just the thyroid when you have thyroid issues. We talk about just sex hormones when you're going through menopause. We talk about just cortisol issues when you're under a lot of stress. But the truth is, is that these are all working together. The thyroid has effects on the other hormones and vice versa. You don't need to know everything about the hormone system, but there are a couple of things that I do think are very important. First, all of the hormones in your body are set up on feedback loops. So what happens is that your hypothalamus, that really important part in your brain, tells your pituitary gland that we need more or less hormone. The pituitary gland then goes on and tells the individual organs whether to increase production of hormones or to decrease production of hormones. This feedback loop causes a couple of things to happen. The first, is that it means that all of your hormones are set up on a cyclical nature. We're gonna be going through all of the individual hormones and their regular cycles so that you can see, but what happens is that in normal functioning, you have higher levels of, hor of hormones at certain times and lower levels of certain hormones at different times. So cyclical nature is the first most important point. The second one is that during those lower level of hormones, it actually allows your hormone receptors to resensitize to those hormones. So if those hormone receptors in the various spots in your body are constantly getting exposed two hormones, eventually they're going to become less sensitive to those hormones and stop responding as robustly. So this is another thing that we want. We want that cyclical nature so that your receptors can resensitize to the hormones that your body is actually secreting. This is the way that humans are designed. We are designed with this ebb and flow, this give and take, this balance between energy and rest and relaxation. And that's why it is so important that we have a regular cycle that includes sleep so that we can set ourselves up for success when it comes to the functioning of 
of our endocrine system. All right, so let's go just briefly over some of the big hormone players in your body that affect your weight, that affect your energy level, that affect your metabolism, affect your sense of vitality and well-being, and the big ones that we often think of when we say that we're having issues with our hormones, we're just not feeling that good. So that you can see exactly how they are set up on a 24-hour cycle. So first, let's go over your thyroid. Your thyroid, which sits right here, the thyroid gland, is responsible for so many processes in your body. It helps with bone health. It helps with your metabolism. It helps with your digestion and gut movement. It helps with your cognitive functioning. It helps with your cardiovascular system. It helps with your nervous system. It touches almost, if not every part of your body. So this is actually a graph of the TSH variations. So the TSH is thyroid stimulating hormone, which is produced in your brain. Remember your hypothalamus, what happens when your hypothalamus sees that there's low levels of thyroid hormone in your system, it prompts your pituitary gland to release TSH that goes to your thyroid gland that releases thyroid hormone. So this is an actual thyroid hormone. This is the precursor, the TSH. So as you can see, our TSH naturally falls off early in the our morning, our day, stays kind of low and then ramps up at night. That is saying at night, our body is getting prepared to do all of those metabolic functions, to go through that rest and digest and clean up everything in our body. Thus, if we're not going through the cycle of actually sleeping well at night, our thyroid hormone, our body's going to try to do what it can to maintain homeostasis, but it's not going to be functioning at optimal levels. All right, next I wanna talk about cortisol. So cortisol is produced from your adrenal glands, which sit on top of your kidneys. Again, your hypothalamus is scanning the environment, scanning your body, assessing for threats, and assessing when you need a little bit more of that stress hormone cortisol. So of course, if you're under stress, if you are in a fight or flight or freeze situation, think bear attacking you. And first thing in the morning, so you start to wake up, your body needs a little bit of oomph to get going during the day. So your hypothalamus tells your pituitary to release a hormone that goes and tells your adrenal glands to release cortisol. Cortisol, again, helps with blood flow, it helps with alertness, it helps with energy. And again, we want little bits of it, but when it's on, all of the time, our body, A, starts to get desensitized. So we, instead of feeling energized, we feel fatigued. We feel brain fog. We feel, uh, and it can also decrease immune function. It can worsen insulin resistance, leading to weight gain. So if we look at this graph here, you see, as I said, our body wants a little bit more of that stress hormone, that get up and go first thing in the morning. And naturally, we start to have more of that First thing in the morning, you'll see it kind of peak somewhere between like around eight-ish is usually when we anticipate the peak. We want a little bit hanging around through the day, but we really want it to taper off at night so that we can sleep. If we are not getting adequate sleep, our cortisol levels, our body is going to be saying, oh shoot, we're, we're awake, something's going on. We need a little bit more energy because we're dragging. Let's do little more pulses of cortisol. And it's gonna keep it going on in an irregular pattern than what our body needs. And that's going to contribute to all of those things that are the concern with excess cortisol. All right, now let's talk about are sex hormones. So specifically, I want to talk about testosterone and estrogen. So testosterone's role is to help with metabolism. It increases libido. It increases energy levels. It helps with our muscle mass and our muscle strength. And of course, it plays a reproductive role. Estrogen helps with our brain function, our bone health, our cardiovascular health, our cholesterol. It also helps with our metabolism, our hair, skin, and our nails. Especially when we're talking about women, we often think of hormones on a monthly cycle instead of a 24-hour diurnal cycle. But if you look at these charts, you will see that testosterone 
and estrogen have a little bit of a bump again first thing in the morning because these things help with metabolism they help with energy they help with brain functioning so this first graph is salivary testosterone rhythm uh, rhythm and this is mainly in women but you can see it's elevated during the first half of the day and then starts to fall off towards the second half of the day the same thing can be said with estrogen it doesn't matter which day of cycle you're on of course like if you're in different phases like luteal versus follicular phase that total estrogen spike is going to be higher but still even on those lower estrogen periods we still get a spike of estrogen early in the day again because our body is trying to give us all of the things that we need to get up and go during the day those sex hormones are set up in the same way as all of these other hormones. The hypothalamus tells our pituitary to release certain hormones like FSH and LH that go and tell our ovaries or our testes to secrete those sex hormones. And then finally, I wanted to talk about growth hormone. So growth hormone is found in much higher levels in children who are growing, thus it is called growth hormone, but we still have it into adulthood. And it is helpful for metabolism, energy, blood sugar regulation, muscle mass, all of those things that we're talking about that not only help with weight regulation, but this sense of well-being, energy, and vitality. So let's go through the growth hormone 24-hour cycle. And as you can see, you'll get little pulses of it throughout the day, but you really get a higher spike of it overnight, similar to the way we were seeing TSH with the thyroid. So certain hormones want to be turned on at night to do all of those nightly cleanup, metabolic, all of those functions. And then other hormones that help with energy levels, mental awareness and cognition, those things like cortisol, estrogen, testosterone, all of those things that you want turned on early in the morning when you're getting up for your day, those are going to spike a little bit earlier in the morning. But what you can see with all of these graphs is there is a cyclical nature to it. And it's so important so that your body can actually continue to respond to it and not drown out the noise of having these hormones turned on all of the time. Finally, I just wanted to go over a couple of non-hormonal functions of the hypothalamus just so you can see that this is all interrelated the hypothalamus helps with melatonin production melatonin is a hormone but it's more of a neurohormone it doesn't follow the same path those the hypothalamus pituitary end organ path that those other hormones do it is actually secreted from your pineal gland pineal gland gets input from light and temperature as well as your hypothalamus to tell us okay conditions are getting right we're not stressed about anything it's okay to turn on our melatonin production so that we can set ourselves up for adequate sleep at night melatonin also has other roles than just putting us to sleep we often think of it as just the sleep hormone but that's not the case melatonin does help with insulin regulation in our body insulin is another hormone that's not as directly related to these cyclical patterns that these other hormones are but it's more related in to the foods that we consume and the timing of the foods that we consume. What happens though with especially weight gain, especially around the midsection, is that we become insulin resistant. So as you can see, melatonin plays a role in this insulin response, as does many of these other hormones, like your thyroid, like your cortisol, like your growth hormone. So the more we can have these all working appropriately, the less likely it is that you will be gaining weight or having difficulty keeping weight from packing on. One other function of melatonin is that it's very anti-inflammatory, which is a great thing that helps our body out. It helps our body function. It helps, again, keep us feeling well. So we do want appropriate melatonin levels, and that does come from the hypothalamus and adequate sleep cycles. Finally, the hypothalamus does play a role in appetite and mood regulation. Again, it all comes back to it being the master controller, trying to keep us in balance, keep the homeostasis of our body. So it helps us know 
okay, we are hungry, we should sit down and eat versus nope, we're full, we can go expend some excess energy or get the appropriate emotional response from a social aspect to get those things that we need for survival because we are a social species. So the hypothalamus plays such a huge role. And that is where this intersection of weight regulation, hormones, and sleep comes into play. If your hypothalamus is quote unquote worried about something and that is not allowing you to sleep, all of these other processes are going to be thrown off. Your body is not going to go through the regular cycles that it needs so that your hormones are functioning well, so that your metabolism is functioning well, so that your body stays sensitive to insulin and uses the energy that you consume in the form of food appropriately instead of inappropriately, packing it on your midsection, storing it in your liver. Those are the things you don't want. As I mentioned, this is such a complex, interconnected web where everything affects everything else. But that's okay because all you have to do is intervene on one area and see the benefits across the board. So if you are struggling with sleep, if you are struggling with chronic insomnia, where you are having difficulty falling asleep, staying asleep, or you're waking up too early, and this has been going on for some time, you want to address sleep, which will translate into benefits for your hormone system, your endocrine system, as well as improved weight regulation and easier ability to lose weight if you need to. If that sounds like you, I have just the thing for you, and it is called the Sleep Solution. The Sleep Solution is a fully self-guided online course that I have designed for you, those with chronic insomnia, that will improve the quality of and quantity of your sleep within three months without the use of medications or drugs. If that sounds like something you're interested in, please go check it out at selfhealingdrashley.com. Until next time, I'll see you guys.